Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to discuss Marriott's transfer partners. So if you're someone who's been following the points and miles game, or if you're someone who just happens to see an advertisement for one of the Marriott credit cards, you may have noticed that they're having some historically high offers that are pretty awesome. But if you're someone like myself who actually doesn't happen to stay at Marriott's, but still actually wants to take advantage of these awesome offers, there are ways you can do that. And I'm gonna go over that in this video. But before I do that, I'm JP Knowledge, and here on this channel, I like to drop some knowledge on you about personal finance, savings, and how to maximize spend. If there's something you're interested in, please subscribe down below. Okay, so for myself, the reason why that I am not really gonna be someone who actually stays at Marriott Hotels is because Hyatt is my number one program, and then Hilton happens to be my number two. And if I happen to stay at other hotels outside of that, they tend to be boutique hotels, or I might just stay at like an Airbnb or stay with somebody. So Marriott is not in my list of hotels to stay with, and I don't think I need to have a third program on top of that to gather in points, have other annual fees and things like that. So for me, I don't actually use the Marriott program, but um, there are some really awesome offers. Now, I just made a video discussing about how there's all the different credit card historic that offers. We can get the free nights, we can get the 150,000 point sign up bonuses. You can see right here on the screen for the Marriott Brilliant card. There's also gonna be their business card. We get 125,000 points. There's gonna be from Chase, there's gonna be 125,000 point sign up bonus. And then there's gonna be a 60,000 point sign up bonus for the no annual fee card. So all of their cards are now actually having some really good offers. They also come with free night uh, and free night certificates is actually gonna come with it. Um, that's gonna be higher than normal. So for instance, this uh, Bonvoy Brilliant card is actually gonna get 85,000 point free night certificate, which is gonna end up allowing you to stay at St. Regis's and and um, you know Ritz Carlton. So a lot of awesome hotels to be able to stay at. Uh, but for the 150,000 points that's out there, if you're someone like myself who is not gonna be someone who's actually gonna be staying at the hotels, but you wanna take advantage of this awesome offer, what you can do is you can actually look at what Marriott has, which is their transfer partners. And Marriott is one of the few programs that actually allows you to transfer their points to other programs. Now, obviously you can do that with Chase, with Ultimate Rewards, you can transfer all their transfer partners, and then as well as you can do that with, with Amex Membership Reward Points, you can transfer their transfer partners. With City Points, you can transfer a third, so with Capital One, you can transfer with those. So those are gonna be the more versatile programs that allow you to transfer out to other transfer partners and then uh, but typically normally how it actually goes is that when you transfer all those points to those programs those points are usually trapped in those programs so if you're someone who transfers over there you're like okay well now this is you you actually want to have your points in ultimate rewards or in membership reward points because then you have more versatility with it but the Marriott points actually allow you to transfer over to transfer partners now a lot of people won't do this because they don't see that they're actually gonna be getting the greatest value. But for some programs, if you actually do decide to transfer to these other programs, you actually can get really good value. So this is from uh, Thrifty Traveler. They're actually just happen to have the list of all the different transfer partners that are actually out there for Marriott. But as you can see, there's a lot of airlines you can actually transfer your points to um, that actually might end up being very valuable for you. So for instance, you can see on here, there's a number of different programs that you'd already do from your Chase, from your uh, American Express, points, but the difference is the value. So you're gonna get three to one. So if you decide that you want to transfer over your points from your Marriott uh, program, you have to have Marriott points, then what you're gonna end up getting is you transfer over 30,000 points, you're gonna end up getting 10,000 points. So if you end up transferring over 60,000 points, you should only end up getting 20,000 points, but actually you typically have a 5,000 point bonus if you end up doing 60,000 points. So if you transfer over 60,000 points, you'll actually end up getting 25,000 points. So while yes, for some people they might end up going, well, I'd rather have that all be in my Marriott program to redeem for Marriott stays. If that's the case for you, then have at it with that and take advantage of these awesome um, bonuses that are going on for their new sign, for their sign up bonuses. But if you're someone like myself who doesn't happen to want to do that to stay at Marriott hotels, what you can end up doing is looking at some of these programs, you can end up getting really good value. So what you actually have to do is try to figure out what actually works out really good for you. Now tips and things you need to know when you actually are transferring the points are going to be here from Frequent Miler. They're actually going to say you actually want to transfer in 60,000 point increments to make sure you end up getting that uh, the additional 5,000 point bonus. So for instance, if you know if you happen to want to transfer over 180,000 points, you'll be able to get 75,000 points right there because instead of you getting just the 20,000 for each, you're gonna end up getting 5,000 additional on top. So this could actually be something that can end up happening with that sign-up bonus from the Marriott Brilliant card. You're gonna end up getting 150,000 points for the sign-up bonus. And if you end up doing this spend and then end up racking up an additional 30,000 points, you can end up transferring that 
uh, over to one of these programs and end up getting 75,000 points. So you do want to make sure you're doing 60,000 point transfer um, increments. And then at the same exact time, it's going to be like transferring with any other program where you want to make sure that when you actually do transfer, it's going to be for um, awards that you already have planned. For me, I have been racking up a number of um, Alaska Airlines miles because I do know that I do actually want to go over to Asia. Um, now, hopefully the miles don't get devalued because um, I would have already been trying to set up my trip for Asia, but because of how the pandemic's been going, it's been kind of difficult to go over to Japan. So because of that, I've just had the points set up. But um, for me, I, that's a program that I know that I would want to transfer over to. But uh, uh, you do want to make sure that you actually do already have things planned out because if you don't have it planned out, you transfer it over, you never know exactly what's going to happen with some of these programs. So, um, Or you might even just want to do something, for instance, just like topping off a program. So if you happen to want to, you know, if you only happen to need just a few more miles for a program, even though you might not get the greatest of value compared, if you decide that you would rather do that than actually have to spend more money, it can end up being very beneficial for yourself. Now, going back over to the transfer partners for Marriott, what you end up seeing is that they pretty much have all the main airlines that you'd actually want to end up flying. So it just comes down to which ones can actually end up being harder to actually get the transfer points gained up with. So for instance, something you actually might notice here is something like, you know, Air Canada's Aeroplan, you get three to one right there, but you can actually transfer from American Express to get the, the points over there. You can do it from Chase. So for me, something transferring something like that isn't actually going to be as valuable because I already know I have abilities to gain up a lot of points from other programs and transfer it over at a one-to-one -one ratio. But programs that actually can be harder to actually end up getting these type of points, for instance, like something like the Alaska Airlines, which is one that I said, even though it's a three-to-one, it is hard to get their points because other than with spend and then other than with the sign-up bonus, there are some ways where you can end up doing the shopping portals or you can end up doing things with dining, but you can't rack up, you can't transfer over the points the same way you could from other programs um, that can usually get the one-to-one. -one. So while yes, it is three-to-one, you can end up getting really, really good value from that. Uh, but you have to make sure you are checking out with the different programs that you actually might want to change it over to. So for instance, United, you actually get an additional 10% on top of it. So if you decide that you want to transfer over 60,000 Marriott points over to United, instead of getting 25,000 with that additional 5,000 point bonus, you actually end up getting 27,500. So if you happen to want to top off some of your United miles because you want to use the excursionist perk or for whatever reason that you want to use uh, the United program, it can actually maybe end up being beneficial for yourself there. But if you decide that you want to transfer to something like JetBlue, JetBlue is going to give you a six to one ratio. So for, I think this is horrible. And even on, you know, uh, Thrifty Traveler, they also talk about how horrible this is because, uh, yeah, I get that you want to maybe get JetBlue points, but you can get the JetBlue credit card. You can rack them up. I don't think JetBlue cards are actually, JetBlue points are actually going to be that hard to come by. So for that reason, it's not really going to make that much sense. And then there's other things on here where just kind of show some comically bad transfer uh, ratio, such as like, the Air New Zealand has a 200 to 1 ratio. So if you transfer over 60,000 points, you're going to get a whopping 325 points. I don't know why they even have this even as an option, but hey, it is an option. It is out there. So they just decided to let you know that maybe someone out there wants to get those 325 Air New Zealand miles. But I'm going to show you some of the, the, the different programs that I think that I if I decide to actually take advantage of this offer, where I would maybe transfer it to. So one of them would end up being transferring over the miles to Korean Air Skypass, because Korean Air's uh, miles are actually gonna end up being harder to come by because they don't have the transfer partners. I think they used to be with Chase, but now you can't get it with that. And unfortunately that has taken away some sweet spots, but if you decide that you want to transfer them over there, you could take advantage of some of the things. So for instance, if you decide you want to go over to Korea, uh, that could end up being a, a good spot to end up using it. But where I would maybe even use it would be to actually go over to Hawaii because they actually have it so that you can actually end up using the miles. Um, you can actually end up getting 25,000 Korean uh, Air Skypass miles to actually do a round trip over to Hawaii in economy. So depending on where you are in the continental US, this can actually end up being very beneficial for you possibly. So if you decide you want to transfer it over to that and you end up getting yourself, you can get somewhere near about you know, if you can get near 180,000 uh, Marriott miles, then you can, or Marriott points, then you can end up transferring over to 75,000, which would end up giving you three round trips over to Hawaii. So that's something I think can end up being a good value right there if you decide that that's the trip you want to do and you don't happen to stay at Marriott. 
Um, another one could end up being transferring over to Turkish Airlines. So uh, if you, anyone who's watching is familiar with uh, Turkish Miles and Smiles, they can end up being really awesome as well. Now, Tur Turkish Miles and Smiles, you can actually, they actually are a transfer partner with City. It can be kind of harder to rack up the City points. Um, but uh, if you happen to be someone who actually happens to have the City Premier card, Turkish Miles and Smiles can end up being an awesome program to transfer them over. And you can actually use the same, uh, you can actually use pretty much a very similar thing where you can, use those miles to end up going over to Hawaii as well. Now, the issue with Turkish Miles and Smiles is that I've found that the award space on there is incredibly difficult to find. Now, Frequent Miler has actually come up with, um, if you decide you want to read on there how to actually do it, they can show you ways of how to make it easier, but you can do a flight over to Hawaii one way in economy for 7,500 miles. That is insane. So that means a round trip in Hawaii can only end up being 15,000. And you can end up doing business class or like the lay flat seat for 12,500. So you can actually end up doing a first class uh, lay flat in United from the, cause it's gonna end up being one of Turkish um, uh, partners. You can end up having a lay flat in, on United from somewhere in the continent of the US over to Hawaii for a round trip, 25,000 miles. Now that can end up being an amazing value right there. However, I've just found that it is to the point that it is so incredibly difficult and annoying to find to the point where I'd rather not even, for me, go through the process of actually doing it. Because I honestly would rather just go through economy and fly there in economy than use possibly the amount of time it could take to end up finding the flight to go over there on from the Turkish Smiles and Smiles program. Because the website can end up being incredibly annoying and incredibly frustrating, but that's just if you're trying to look for the things with the transfer partners. If you decide that you actually want to use Turkish Airlines to go over to Turkey, then you could actually end up getting really good value from it. So um, I would that's another program you can end up looking at. But the program that I think that I might end up using mine for if I decided to take advantage of this with the Marriott um, transfer partners would end up being Alaska Miles. So yes, it ended up being the three to one transfer partner. If you can end up getting 150,000 or if you can end up hitting spend and maybe getting it up to 180,000, what you end up looking at right there is you end up getting yourself somewhere between right around 70,000 or up to 75,000 uh, Alaskan airline miles. Now getting something like that can actually get you a trip from Los Angeles over to Tokyo in business class um, and you still actually have miles saved up. So I'll even show you on here because this is actually something I know that I want to do. Uh, I've actually already have enough miles where I can do this and you actually end up getting first class. Now I've been having a hard time finding first class availability on Alaska's website through Japan Airlines, uh, which is one of, gonna be one of their partners. But as you look right here, you can get for 60,000 miles, you end up getting in, in $19, you're gonna end up getting a business class flight from um, Los Angeles over to Tokyo. So that can end up being incredible value. I mean, if you look up what the price of that would end up being, it ended up being thousands of dollars. And you actually end up getting um, a stopover as well. So you can actually end up getting, if you would decide you want to go from um, Los Angeles to Tokyo, on Japan Airlines, if wherever else Japan Airlines flies to, you could actually have one stopover. So you can stay in Japan for the amount of time that you would like and then go to another destination in business class as well. So it can end up being even more and more valuable. So the way I think of it is like, if you're someone who actually wants to take advantage of this, you can get yourself the Alaskan Airlines credit card, um, hit that sign up bonus and the Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant card, take advantage of that sign up bonus. And then you'll transfer over those points over to the Alaskan Airlines uh, mileage uh, program, then that from that you could end up getting your, either for yourself a round trip flight from the US to Tokyo with the stopover and back, or you could have it be you and a loved one have a flight from the US over to Tokyo and then have the stopover in Tokyo and go to another place and it's only gonna cost you uh, 20 bucks per person. So this could end up being an awesome value if you decide to take advantage of that and you decide to get both of those cards. So this is just something that I want to show you because uh, I don't, I haven't seen as many people talk about the, being the transfer partners with Marriott uh, uh, program. And I think it's just because of the ratio, but there are good ways to actually take advantage of it. And if you are someone who actually isn't interested in staying at Marriott hotels, but actually wants to take advantage of, you know, these amazing signup bonuses, then I think that it would make a lot of sense to actually get yourself the Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant uh, credit card, hit that sign up bonus, maybe stay at, you know, a St. Regis or a uh, Ritz Carlton, just the one time, take advantage of the 85,000 point certificate that you're going to end up getting with the sign up bonus, grab those points, transfer over those points to 
one of the programs that you actually know you're actually gonna end up getting uh, good value for something like the Alaskan Airlines program for myself and then end up using that for the flights and travel you actually wanna end up doing. So that's I think what I might end up doing. I don't know if I'm gonna end up taking advantage of it because there are other cards I wanna get, but it's just something that I want to put out there and maybe allow people to know that the option does exist. But hopefully this information was helpful. If you guys do have any questions, drop them down in the comment section down below. I'll do the best I can to answer them. But if you do happen to like this video, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button and have a beautiful rest of your day.